I made this telescope out of paper to see the stars better in the sky, but it doesn't really seem to work. Did you know that there are telescopes that orbit or go around the Earth? There are telescopes that are going around the Earth this very second. Make sure that these telescopes are working and doing what they're supposed to do in space. There is a lot of work that goes into them behind the scenes before they are launched into space and to keep track of what they are doing. It takes a lot of careful planning, communication, and problem solving here on Earth. Who would work on a project like this for their job? Why is it even important? Find out what STEM career I am describing in this episode of the STEM Career Quest. that we are going to be hearing about today is what it is like being a software engineer at NASA Goddard. Software engineers use their skills in computer science to build projects and solve problems. They'll often use a lot of coding and computer software when working on their projects. To tell us more about their career, we are going to be hearing from Aaron Shepard. Ever since Aaron was a kid, he always dreamed about building cool things in a lab and floating around in space. Aaron doesn't currently float around in space in his job as a software engineer at NASA Goddard, but he literally is living out his dreams and gets to work with things all that centered around space. So excited for you to get to know him and his awesome STEM career. Now, get ready for today's episode quest, my little questies. You know, instead of besties, you're my questies. You're here every week. We're best buds by now. Listen carefully to the answers of these three questions. At the end of the episode, I will be revealing the answers. The questions should be answered in order, but you have to be a very careful listener to get them correct. Let's dive in. Question number one. What does the Roman Space Telescope do better than the Hubble Space Telescope? Question number two. True or false? Can things fall out of orbit when things are going around the Earth? And question number three. What prank did one of Aaron's co-workers do to him? Be a careful listener. Now let's embark on this episode. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for being here. If you wouldn't mind telling us, what is your STEM career and how would you describe what you do? Okay, yes, thanks for having me on. Um, my name is Aaron Shepard. I work as a software engineer at NASA Goddard. Um, what I do is I'm working on the tracking system for the new Roman Space Telescope. And what that means is when we send it into space, um, we've got to know where it is um, as it's going around our planet and all of that. And so we work on the guidance and tracking systems to make sure that we know where it is, we can calculate where it's going, and we can tell it to move out the way if something's coming like an asteroid or maybe an alien spaceship. We never know. <laughs> Ooh, that's really cool that you can actually see where this telescope is going. What does this telescope actually do? Um, so this telescope will do a lot for us. It actually has a wide, um, it has a wide camera that can take um, the equivalent of a hundred pictures from the previous Hubble telescope. So what the Hubble could see in one picture, we can see, or what the what the Hubble would see in a hundred pictures, we can now see in one. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to do some astrophysics um, studies. We're going to look at the way that the universe works, some of the physics behind it. We're going to look at exoplanets, which is another way of saying planets that are outside of our solar system. We're going to study them some more. And we're just going to try to look as far back into the past as we can to learn more about the universe. It's really cool. That is so cool. And I never knew that there were telescopes out in space. I thought they were just yes. here on Earth. 
Yes. And so the interesting thing is that um, when you're here on Earth, you have to consider things like the weather, light pollution, so lights from cities or other big places that drown out the stars. So if you're listening and you live in a place like New York City, you might not be able to see the Milky Way this um in the same way that somebody who lives in a more rural area would. Um, so one thing that we do is we'll actually put telescopes and other space instruments in space, hence the name space instruments. And this allows us to get a much clearer picture. Um, actually, we're sending our telescope to the same place that um, we sent the James Webb telescope. Um, and so that's a it's a really cool area. Um, where we like to put things because they tend to stay there. And so it's a, it's just a really great opportunity to get an unobstructed, unblocked view of our universe. That is so amazing. But what would you say is one of the coolest parts about your job? Uh, one of the coolest parts about my job is I actually get to work with data that will come down from the telescope while it's in space. And so right now, since it hasn't launched, we're doing a lot of um, we're doing a lot of modeling, a lot of guessing, we're simulating things. But the programs that I'm writing will actually read the telescope telemetry data. And so you, when you see it, it's it will come down from the spacecraft. And I think that is just so cool because that means that a part of me, something that I have worked on, is actually going into outer space. And I'm super excited for that. You should be. Not everybody can say that's something they get to work on, that their work gets to leave this planet. Oh, yes. I I still, I, you know, some days I do some days I, 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 some days are regular days and I'm just, I, I'm just trying to do my job. And then other days I stop and I think about it and it's just really, really, it's, it's just really awesome. That's the only way I can describe it. Along with that. So that's a super cool project, but I'm sure every day there's something that has might've happened that has shocked you or a funny story. Is there something that comes to mind where you just have to tell us what happened? <laughs> um yes, one time I was messing around with some code and it stopped working and I was borrowing the code from what we use for the Hubble Space Telescope and I w- it, I was brand new, I just started and my coworker tells me he's he says man, you just crashed the Hubble Space Telescope. And I started freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, did I do that? He's like, no, you didn't do that because we have all these the we have all these systems and checks and stuff in place so that way nothing bad can happen while it's in orbit. You just you just made something crash on our side. So it's okay. You didn't really break the Hubble Space Telescope. But for that split second I was sweating bullets and I I was just I was so scared. I thought, oh my goodness I'm going to be in the newspapers. This is going to be a bad thing. Everybody's going to know that I broke it. My mom's going to talk about me. Everybody's going to talk about me, but it ended up being fine. That is not a funny joke, but it is a little bit funny. Oh, it's (laughs) it's hilarious. Is the Hubble Space Telescope still up right now? Yes, it has been up since, I believe, um, it was the late 90s or the early 2000s that it went up. So it's been up there for a while. Three things about the Hubble Space Telescope you may not already know. The Hubble Space Telescope orbits or goes around the Earth. While it is up there, it is taking pictures of the stars, galaxies, and planets while using its digital camera. It then sends those pictures back down to Earth so scientists can study and analyze the amazing cool things that the telescope saw in space. The Hubble Space Telescope launched in 1990. That is the year that I was born, so you can do the M in STEM and a little bit of math to figure out how old the Hubble Space Telescope is and how old I am. Maybe you'll be surprised, maybe you won't. The Hubble Space Telescope is named after an astronomer, a person who studies the stars and the planets, Edwin P. Hubble. He didn't invent the Hubble Space Telescope, but he made a lot of important discoveries during his time. So in turn, it really is a big deal that this telescope in space is named after him. 
Many of you can say that you have a big telescope named after you. It is a big deal. Did you know these three things about the Hubble Space Telescope? Pretty cool, right? Thinking about what you do for your job, what experiences in your life led you to this career? Is there a, one person? Is there a lot of things? How did you get to do what you're doing now? Um, it's, it's a lot of things, but I would have to say that along my journey, I had so much help from teachers and from mentors. Um, when I was in school, I had a professor that I said, hey, I really like to do space things. Um, can you help me get there? And he was incredible. He let me do research projects. He wrote me recommendation letters. Um, and then when I was a student, I was actually working at NASA over the summer. And my mentors from NASA were always so friendly and so helpful. Like they really, really were invested in um, helping me develop as a scientist and as an engineer. And they just, anytime I needed something, everybody was so kind. Um, they were able to guide me and eventually I got to the position that I'm in now and I just can't, I can only say that I did that thanks to the support of a lot of people. So it's very hard to pinpoint one exact thing. Um, but for me, I would say the best thing that helps out, uh, that helped me out in my journey was uh, asking questions, um, being curious, um, following up with people, um, doing my best to do a good job. Sometimes you sometimes you don't get answers right and that's okay. And, and most importantly, being willing to learn and willing mm -hmm. to make mistakes. Um, that really, really helped me along my journey. Do you feel like now in your job, you still have to be willing to learn and have <laughs> that growth mindset? <laughs> Yes. Um, so my background is actually in electrical engineering, and I worked with electronics and hardware for a couple of years before I went to NASA full time. And now I do a lot of aerospace engineering. And so I'm learning things about orbital mechanics. Uh, I never took a class in orbital mechanics in college, so I had to do a lot of reading. Um, a lot of times people will say things in meetings and I'm sitting there Googling furiously searching for answers on the internet because um, they said something and I'm like, what is, I, I don't know what that is. So there are lots of things that I come across just about daily at my job still where it, it makes me want to learn. And I, I mean, obviously I want, I, I need to learn this for my job, but in general, I just like to learn new things and I really enjoy mm -hmm. this opportunity to do so. It's really cool. Oh. Could you explain more about what it means when something is in orbit? Yes, of course. So um, when we say orbit, that means if the it means that it's going around a, another planet or another star. So for example, the Earth is in orbit around the sun, which means it goes around the sun. And that's where we get a year from because that's how long it takes us to go around the sun one time. But then we can also put things in orbit around the Earth. And so uh, you think about satellites, um, the International Space Station, all of that. We are, those are, that's in orbit. So it's going around. And uh, believe it or not, the math and being able to predict what an orbit is and what it could be comes from things that Isaac Newton did 400 years ago. And so all these things, it's the math and science for this, some parts of it are four or 500 years old. And so it's really cool to see how all of that plays into modern space flight and modern technology. That's so cool. Can anything get out of orbit? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you can, the International Space Station actually it's so close to, the Earth, to Earth that the atmosphere slows it down and it could fall out of orbit. So they have to occasionally fire thrusters to put it back into the right orbit. Otherwise, it would just fall out. I did not know that. <laughs> oh, yes. I was asking that it's, question um, kind of selfishly. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's um, actually they... Um, I know this happened with a Chinese space station, but they, with old space stations, they just say, all right, we're going to let it fall back to planet earth. It will either burn up as it comes down, or we're going to, we're going to make it so it falls in the middle of the ocean and it won't hurt anything. But there we, that's, we do that all the time. 
okay. where we let it fall back and it'll just either burn away or go deep in the ocean. All right. Along with that, if there are kids out there who think, oh man, I want to do what Aaron does when I grow up. Do you have any advice for kids out there um, who would want to do something similar to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the first piece of advice that I would have or that I have is to learn how to work with others and learn how to play nice with others, how to be in a team. Um, I know the audience for this podcast is a little younger. So when you're in school and you have group work, um, that is a very essential skill. Um, there are on my, my small section of the team is probably 30 people, but the project that I'm working on, there's a, might be a few thousand of us there. So there's a lot of us and we have to communicate. We have to work together. We have to be nice with one another. We have to play nice with one another sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a very important skill. Um, the second thing I would say, just like I mentioned earlier, is always be curious. Um, never stop wanting to learn new things because that's where opportunities come um, that you couldn't even uh, imagine before. Um, because like I said, I did electronics. And so I wasn't thinking about doing orbital analysis or tracking things in space. But when the opportunity came, um, I was willing to put myself out there and uh go outside my comfort zone and learn new things. And the last thing that I would say is don't be afraid to mess up. Um, we, it's, it's a natural part of life. Sometimes you get questions wrong. Sometimes you say wrong things and it's okay. As long as you're committed to learning from your mistakes, I really think that that's important for anyone, but especially for a young um, students to hear because nowadays everybody feels like they have to be perfect and it, it puts a lot of pressure on us. But part of the learning process is to mess up a few times and adjust based off of your mistakes. Well, I love that. And I love that your advice is things that you are still doing in your job and continue to do. And you obviously love with what you do. And I can't wait to hear um, other kids out there who might end up doing what you're doing one day. Oh, yes, definitely. It is. It is every day. It is just so inspiring. I, I work with people who are experts in their field. Um, I get to work with people who are very passionate about what they do. Um, I have coworkers who have put things on Mars. I have coworkers who have launched things to the moon. Uh, we've done work with SpaceX. I, one of my bosses actually did the calculations for when um, SpaceX put the, the Tesla in orbit. <laughs> And so that's like, those are really cool stories to hear where you're like, wow, like it, this, all this is really happening. And so to, to be a part of this, um, to be a part of this awesome legacy of, uh, of space exploration and space flight is just, it is an honor. It really truly is. Have you been listening carefully to today's episode of the STEM Career Quest? Let's get into those answers of the episode quest and see how you did. Question number one was, what does the Roman Space Telescope do better than the Hubble Space Telescope? They have very similar jobs, but the Roman Space Telescope is set to have more improved technology and also take way better pictures. 
Question number two, true or false? Can things fall out of orbit when things are going around the earth? Surprisingly, true. Things can naturally fall out of orbit on their own, or they can be forced out of orbit if needed. And question number three, what prank did one of Aaron's coworkers do to him? Aaron was a little bit nervous at first, but his coworkers said that Aaron had broke the Hubble Space Telescope. Now we know that isn't true, but that is such a silly prank to play on a new person working with you. I hope Aaron got him back. Want help following along with these questions? Join the STEM Career Quest Club where you get an episode listening guide for every single episode and tons of bonus content to enhance your listening experience. What is something new today that you learned about being a software engineer? Is this a type of STEM career that you might want to be someday? Even if it isn't, it is okay and so exciting to learn all about these different STEM careers that are empowering our world. I am so glad that you were here and excited to be with you while you continue your journey in the next episode of the STEM Career Quest podcast.